Was there a moment when you knew you wanted to become an artist? Not really. I <laughs> uh, didn't have one moment, but I always thought that being an artist as a job was such a cool thing. And as soon as I met my first professional artist in real life, I started to realize that that could be an actual career. What's up, this is FDOT. I'm an artist based in Brooklyn. We're here in my studio today, and we're gonna talk a little bit about my inspiration behind the Topps Project 70 cards. I had some teachers in college that inspired me to go down the path of lettering and typography. Once I had that one professor, his name was John Langdon, and he told me that he was getting paid to be himself. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that. So after I learned that, I tried to develop my own artistic style so I could do just that. For me, gathering inspiration as an artist is all about sensation. Without the sensation, there is no art. So anything that drives a sensation for me, it could be skateboarding, music, traveling, other art. Whenever I feel that spark, that thing that I can't stop thinking about, that's when I know it's a good inspiration for my next piece. When I was getting into the New York art scene, I didn't have too much of a portfolio, but I knew I was really into sign painting and lettering, and I wanted to find ways to use that skill and develop that skill, so I was assisting sign painters, and then eventually I got my first project where somebody actually wanted a painting of mine on a cafe wall. It was a bit of a mess with my first few projects, but I learned a lot, and my hand lettering was the focus back then, so I was doing a lot of signs for local businesses. I'm still doing that to this day, it's just, changed a lot and expanded a lot with the style. One project that stands out in my mind was I got to do this mural in Monterey, Mexico, where I got to do the surface of a rooftop football court. So that was the biggest mural I've ever done. And I think the most impactful, I got to like fly my drone above it and see it from above. So that was awesome. I love getting to work with businesses here in Brooklyn. So during the pandemic, I just walked around really and looked for walls and I walked into businesses and just said, hey, I saw some graffiti outside and I'd love to help you out with a mural. So I did a couple pro bono projects in Brooklyn over the summer that are some of my favorite murals that I've done because I've seen the impact that they've created and they've also led on to other paid mural projects too. So how does Brooklyn inspire you? So I used to live in Manhattan for a few years. Then I moved to Brooklyn. I wanted to get a new take on what it was like to be in New York City and be a young person who creates art. And there's a lot of that happening in this specific area in, of Brooklyn. So just surrounding yourself with better art and better artists that are, you know, when you walk into a room, if you're the most creative person in the room, like leave that room. So that's the idea is like, I came to this area to be surrounded by people who are better than me and hopefully just get more collective inspiration from that. I'm also partially colorblind. So getting to work with artists who are so, so good with color really forced me to try it out and just see what I could do with my limited vision. And it's not like I can't see color at all, it's just I can't see very like, low saturation colors. And so when I started to embrace color, that was a big moment for me. Because I realized I actually am pretty good with color if I stick to certain saturated colors. <laughs> And then I think like from a philosophy standpoint, there was a moment in 2014 where I basically lost everything I owned. And one of the things that remained was this drawing that I made, it was the optimist piece. And it was inside my scanner, kind of dug it out of the ruins. And it just changed my whole philosophy on why I create and what I'm here to do, because tomorrow is not promised. So that was a moment where I realized how precious my time here is and my time that I get to create. I think now I trust my intuition a lot more than I used to. I used to judge my artwork more like it was to this or not enough that. And now I just try to make what I really enjoy making and I do push myself to make it better and better. But I don't get so hard on myself when it's not flowing. I just switch my medium or switch the tools and keep working to find something and, and it always works out in the end. Any advice for the younger self coming up as an artist? I'd say like get more into collaborating earlier. Don't feel like everything is so precious. It's okay to just make mistakes and let whatever's inside come out. Cause when I studied graphic design, they taught us all these rules. 
And a lot of my process has been trying to unlearn some of these rules and break these rules, but don't be afraid to make mistakes is, is the biggest piece of advice. For me, there's just so much history to pull from when you're working on a baseball card. Everyone's got a personality, they got their stats, their team, their cities, their whole story. So I really like getting to do the research behind the player and, and pull that into the card in a unique way or some things that maybe people didn't realize about the player, and hiding little Easter eggs in there. The size of the card is definitely both a strength and a challenge. Like it's cool that you can hold it in your hand, but a lot of those details do get lost if you try to pack it in there too much. Like when the ink goes on, it looks a little different than it does on screen. So I like the challenge though, because I've done probably almost 30 cards now for tops. So each time I'm getting a little bit better at working with the medium. In the corners of my cards, I've been finding that is a good place to hide little stories or take pieces of memorabilia from old team logos and patches and stuff and find ways to work them into the corners of the cards and the borders as well. So the corners and the borders are my favorite elements. I'm not typically a portrait artist, so doing a big hero image of a player is a bit out of my comfort zone and it's, it's fun. Like I'm surprising myself every single time and still trying to work in those Easter eggs into the border, but spending a lot of time just nailing the image of the player too. I knew I didn't want to use the same players as last year, so I didn't do any repeats. Though it was tempting to do more big name players, there was a bunch that weren't included in Topps Project 2020. I knew I wanted to do some famous Yankee players. I grew up just outside of New York City, so Yankees fan at heart. But besides that, I was open. I wanted to get some feedback from my collectors also to see what kind of players that they would be interested in seeing. So I had about half of my players picked out and then half of them were sorted out through talking to people. I wanted to do also a mix of vintage players, retired players, and modern players, just because I wanted to also appeal to some kids too who could get into collecting through this project. Tops for me means excitement, it means discovery, it means just enjoying these nostalgic moments. So I used to go to the local card shop in my town, pick up packs of cards with my brother. The shop's name was Terry's Grand Slam. And I always like to joke, like if only Terry could see me now. The way that it happened with Tops hitting me up to do this project, it couldn't have been a better combination because one, a lot of my other projects got canceled during the pandemic. I needed something to carry me through 2020. And two, getting lost in those memories was so healthy for me to just escape the, the difficult reality that we were all facing last year, so. I think the pressure is a lot lower this year because I already built a solid base of collectors with my style and my set, so I'm not new to tops. I don't feel like I have to prove myself, really. Last year, I didn't feel like I had to prove myself in the beginning, but then once you start getting into the project and there's this healthy competition going on, I definitely was motivated to push myself really hard. I put so much into the project last year. I'm still doing that this year, but I'm working a lot smarter, and I know what I want to create before I sit down, just because I've done so many of these cards already. So I don't put as much pressure on myself to make every card better than the last. I just want to make each one really cool individually. I grew up playing baseball with my dad, with uh, the school teams. I was not very good. <laughs> I was a short kid. I couldn't play very well at all, but there was one game where I hit a triple and then I hit another triple in the same game. And after that, I was like, I'm tired, I'm done. Yo, what's up? This is F Dot. This is JK5. My name is New York Nico. And I'm here with my homies from Tops. And this is Project 70. Meet the artist. Boom. That was fire. Break yourself. Break yourself. <laughs> <laughs>